I now call the August 16th, 2016 regular council meeting to order with council members. Please denote your presence by depressing your yes switch. <laughs> what? Oh, did I? All council members are present. I am present. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, council meetings can also be televised and will be viewed or can be viewed and will be televised on channel 192 in your local cable. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The chair would entertain a motion to approve by minute action the minutes of the August 2nd regular council meeting as published in the Casper Star Tribune on August 12th, 2016. So moved. Second. Moved by Councilman Miller, seconded by Councilman Hopkins. Any corrections? Please cast your vote. And please record the vote. With all members voting aye, motion passes. The chair would entertain a motion to approve by minute action the August 16th bills and claims as audited by City Manager McDonald. So moved. Second. Moved by Councilman Johnson, seconded by Councilman Powell. Any abstentions? Please cast your vote. And please record the vote. All members voting aye, motion passes. The Government Finance Officers Association, representing 18,000 public finance officials throughout the United States and Canada, established the certificate, oh, and the driving influence in state and local government fiscal operations, established the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting Award Program. The program is encouraged to assist state and local governments to go beyond the minimum requirements of financial reporting. This effort reflects the spirit of transparency and full financial disclosure by local governments. The City of Casper has, once again, received the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. The following city staff were instrumental in the 2015 report. Linda Carlson, Cheryl Boyle, Susan Warren, Kirk Gunderson, Lynn McBride, and Shirley Sheehan. On behalf of the citizens, City Council and management, I thank you for your efforts and present to you with this certificate of achievement. So, would Kirk Gunderson, Lynn McBride, and Shirley Sheehan, please step forward. And we can do the, the handshake thing if you do it in order. Okay. <laughs> so, Kirk, Lynn, and Shirley. There we go. Okay. Kirk Gunderson. Who do we give this to? Okay. There you go. Come on back. <laughs> we should have had a, a rehearsal for this. <laughs> Okay.
Council will now address the main business portion of the meeting. Council carries out business by three types of action, by ordinance, resolution, and minute action. Ordinances require three readings and votes, whereas the other items are passed by one. Ordinance create or modify local law. And uh, where was I? Oh, whereas resolutions and minute actions provide for council to carry out business. These various actions have different publication and public hearing requirements. Items may be considered by consent or not consent. Consent items are typically routine and will not be discussed by council. Items not listed as consent will be discussed by council and there is a process for the public as well as council to remove a title from consent. Council will now consider establishing the schedule of future public hearings which are held for the purpose of obtaining public input. Public hearings are held for items such as annexations, liquor license transactions, passing of the budget, and zone changes. Public hearings also require public notice via publication in the newspaper. Please read the consent agenda titles. Establishing September 6, 2016 as a public hearing date for consideration of the following four items. Issuance of a new of new restaurant liquor license number 21, 666 Restaurant Inc., located at 260 South Center Street. Issuance of new re retail liquor license number 37 for Charger Holding LLC, doing business as Yellowstone Garage, located at 355 West Yellowstone. Vacation and replat of lots 3 and 4 and West 37th Street in Mountain Plaza Edition number 5 and lot 11 in Mountain Plaza Edition number 6 to create the Wolf Creek 8, 8 Edition and the rezoning of the proposed Wolf Creek 8 Edition from PUD Planned Unit Development to uh, C2 General Business and OB Office Business to R2 One Unit Residential. Vacation and replat of lots K through T, lot block 59 of the Edding subdivision to create Central Wyoming Rescue Mission Edition and rezoning the area of the proposed Central Wyoming Rescue Mission Edition, formerly described as lots Q, R, S, and T, block 59 of the Edding subdivision from M1 Limited Industrial to C3 Central Business. Chair would entertain a motion. Two, by minute action, established the public hearing dates just read. So moved. Moved by Vice Mayor Kathy and seconded by Councilman Hopkins. Any abstentions or nay votes? Please cast your vote. And please record the vote. With all members voting aye, motion passes. Consideration of the next item will be by ordinance. Please read the consent ordinance on third reading by title only. An ordinance approving a council initiated zone change of multiple properties located in the old Yellowstone District and South Poplar Street corridor. The chair would entertain a motion to approve on third reading the consent ordinance just read. So moved. Second. Moved by Councilman Johnson, seconded by Councilman Powell. Please cast your vote. And please record the vote. With all members voting aye, motion passes. Council will now consider consent resolutions. Please read the consent resolutions by title only. Item 8A1, a resolution authorizing a professional services agreement with ENF Towing for Wrecker and Towing Services. Item 8A2, a resolution authorizing a professional services agreement with All Around Towing for Wrecker and Towing Services. Item 8A3, a resolution authorizing a professional services agreement with MAD Transportation for Wrecker and Towing Services. Item 8A4, a resolution authorizing an agreement with the Natrona County School District for operation of the driving range at the Casper Event Center. Item 8A5, a resolution authorizing acceptance of a grant from the Wyoming Governor's Big Game License Coalition. Item 8A6, a resolution authorizing an agreement with Modern Electric Company for the four sec section signal heads project. Item 8A7, a resolution authorizing a contract for professional services with WLC Engineering, Surveying, and Planning for Design and Construction Administration for the West Casper Zone 2 Water System Improvement Project. Item 8A8, a resolution authorizing a contract for professional services with Engineering Design Associates for the Life Steps Campus Buildings E and C Fire Suppression and Alarm System Replacement Project. 
the chair would entertain a motion to adopt the consent resolutions just read. So moved. Second. Moved by Councilman Hopkins, seconded by Councilman Humphrey. Any abstentions or nay vote? Please cast your vote. Please record the vote. With all members voting aye, motion passes. Council will now consider minute action items. These are routine business items that do not require a resolution. Please read the consent minute action titles. Item 9A1, changing of change of dispensing room for Marco's Coal Fired Pizza, Casper LLC, doing business as Rocca's Pizzeria Napolitana, located at 319 West Midwest Street, Unit A. Item 9A2, authorizing the discharge of uncollectible accounts receivable balances. The chair would entertain a motion to approve consent minute action agenda items just read. So moved. Seconded. Moved by Vice Mayor Caffey, seconded by Councilman Miller. Any abstentions or nay votes? <clears throat> Please cast your vote. And please record the vote. With all members voting aye, motion passes. Yep. Now it's the time we invite anyone in the audience who wishes to speak with the council to come forward. We ask that you please state your name and address. Anyone care to address council? Of course. Welcome, Mr. Zimmerly. Hale Zimmerly, 3035 Bel Air Drive. Um, Last week, Thursday and Friday, my boss shut the shop down and sent us all to a global leadership summit. And this is the third year he's done that for us. And I would like to encourage all of you to go to this global leadership conference. It is a summit. It is very good. One of the top guys speaking was the CEO of Ford Motor Company. And, and there was a lot of big name people sharing with how to be leaders. And one of the things that, I, um, that just st sticks in my head and I look to you guys as leaders, believe it or not. <laughs> but uh, leaders, you guys are leaders and not managers. There's a, there's a difference with that. You need to lead by example and lead and show people the right way to do things. And where managers figure out not to you punch numbers in and figure out. The, the, but there's a big difference. And that's one thing I gleaned from there that, that I want to share with you. And another thing I want to bring up is today, of course, was the primary election day. I'm glad I voted by absentee ballot because I wouldn't have made it there tonight because I just got off work. But uh, I read through a lot of the people running for offices, and a lot of people gave some of how they stand on certain topics, but nobody really shared on what they believe in um, as far as the city goes and with their faith. And uh, so I want to share how I believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And that's how I believe. And I encourage each and every one of you to share with others how you believe, because that's important. So people know where you're at and what you actually believe in. And that's all I have today. Thank you. Thank you. Questions or comments for Dale? <laughs> Anyone else care to address council? The one yeah. comment I would make is, and, and, and it's not specifically about where he stands, but he mentioned about voting. The polls are still open for another 45 minutes for those that have not been able to get there. So I right. would like to stress that, and I appreciate you bringing that up. So thank you. Dennis. Dennis Stansland, 533 South Washington, Casper. Um, authorized discharge of 148,000. Does that mean you've written off 148,000 in bad? How big of an effort does the city make to collect that? 
Um, if you look on the list that was provided in the packet, you will see that collection efforts have been exhausted in 99% of them, which means, yes, they've tried to collect their penny. Most of them are very small debts and not even worth the kind of money that you would invest in trying to collect on it in the first place. I, fi I figured that was such. Yeah. And my other reason for standing up tonight was to address the election as well. 15 people for council. I've been coming for a little while. I can't recall other than seeing two of them here ever in maybe a year and a half. I think that's a very poor commentary. Uh, I would think if they're gonna be running for your seats, they would at least have enough interest to come down here and observe how, how you run them, what you accomplish, what you don't accomplish, how you operate. Uh, anyway, uh, I keep looking around. I don't know any of them anyway, but uh, I've never seen a one of them here. Uh, so that was one of my complaints, I guess. And my other complaint, hoping that some of the editorial board watches the TV at night I thought their editorial was very unfair to the existing council. I'm too lazy to write a letter, or I don't feel confident writing a letter. So uh, anyway, I just get it off my chest by coming down here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Questions or comments for Dennis? Oh, Mr. Steensland, yeah. Yes, a couple of things. You may not feel like writing the letter, but you do come here. We appreciate that and we appreciate your comments. So thank you very much for that. Uh, the other thing about the debts, the utility debts that were forgiven, when I went through it, I think the biggest individual amount was in the neighborhood of $250. And the most recent of those was 2008. So these are all debts prior to 2008. So we have been trying eight years to collect these debts through city plus through collection agencies and they have not been collected. Uh, the non-utility debts were up through 2012, so they're four years old. And some of those were a little larger, but that's kind of where the debts are. So wanted to pass that on to you. Thank you very much. You bet. Anyone else care to address council? Welcome. John and L. Griffith, uh, 915 South Lincoln. Um, I'll be honest, I didn't, uh, didn't intend to come to talk today, but um, <laughs> your meeting went a lot, a lot faster than <laughs> today. Uh, so I just, I just want to take a couple minutes. Um, the, <laughs> I, I, I come here today, I guess, representing um, Midwest Urban Development and, and to some degree, Rocco's Pizzeria. Um, the rest of the crew should be here in about 10 minutes, but I think we'll be done. Um, <laughs> wanted to come here and, and just, my, my daughter wanted to say hi to you, but um, wanted to, to say a sincere thank you to, to this council and, and to previous council members that, uh, that aren't here, um, to city staff, specifically uh, Ms. Becker uh, and Ms., uh, Ms. Carla Mills, um, VH, Mr. Lubin, you know, here uh, just a, a few days ago, we opened uh, the new restaurant downtown. You guys have been hearing about it for a long time and been hearing about when's it going to open, when's it going to open, when's it going to open. Well, we, we finally did, um, and to, uh, to a lot of excitement and to, um, you know, for, for us, you know, kind of the, not the end of a long journey, but uh, the culmination of a lot of effort and a lot of work. And I want you guys to know that our team, and everybody involved, including those um, that are just, just there newly hired and working at this new exciting place, uh, sincerely appreciate your support because we know um, there's been a lot of effort put in, but it could not have been uh, completed and we could not have opened without everything you guys have done for us. So I want you to know from the bottom of our hearts and most sincerely, uh, our whole team says thank you very, very much. So that's all I have. You are very welcome. Any more comments or questions for John Griffith? We, as the city, 
should be thanking you as well for the for the effort and for the the belief in the city and the OYD to come down and make that kind of investment in our community and in the OYD. So from the council and should be from all of the city, we appreciate your investment in the city. So thank you for that as well. Absolutely. <clears throat> and I've already had some of your pizza. Good. I hope it was all Whoa. right. Whoa. Good. It was I good. Had awesome. I need to go. Oh, you were okay. Any more who wish to address council? <laughs> All right, let's go around the table. Councilman Powell. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything to report tonight. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Councilman Hopkins. Don't have much. Uh, the Amical Free Insurance Charge Board met the other night, and we're, we're working very diligently to try to get a couple of parking lots uh, off to the north side of the road going in there. We have a lot of people parking in there, and in some cases, they've you know inadvertently caused some damage to irrigation systems and perhaps to monitoring wells. So uh, we're working on getting two parking lots. One of them for I guess about 10 or 12 cars, and one of them for 30 to 40 cars. And we're just going to probably end up graveling them or put road base kind of compacted road base, depending on how the bids come back. But hopefully we can minimize people just willy nilly pulling off of the road. And it's kind of in light of what's going to happen in August 2017. I'm not sure what we're going to do there. We've got issues to deal with there too. So. And we've got that coming up on Sunday the 21st. Uh, I believe it's going to be at 11 a.m. at Crossroads Park. Yeah. Eclipse and the kickoff kick for the event when the sun goes away. <laughs> okay. And that is, that is interesting to know because that's one of those things that we might be able to miss in the preparations. But if you're going to have people driving over underground transfer lines for water or whatever. You want it hard enough to take it. I think we have to look at it. Yeah. Thank you. Councilman Miller. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, quick report. I attended our CADA board meeting last week, and um, the, the biggest news out of uh, our meeting last week was the announcement that they formally launched their breakthrough uh, 307 project, which what, this is something that Kate has been working on for a little bit, and what it is is they're trying to develop a network of uh, funders and investors uh, to group up with uh, entrepreneurs. And so it's kind of a, a Kata driven um, <coughs> way to help, help fund some of these local entrepreneurs, find sources of funding. And I actually think it's a pretty uh, exciting time for that group and an important time for our economy to kind of find those groups. So uh, I think we're going to be getting some more information out here soon. Um, but the goal of this project is going to be to try to connect the entrepreneurs with the funding sources that they have available. And then through the efforts that, that CADA has with all the businesses that are involved with it um, in town and the community. But that's all I have. Councilman Humphrey. Nothing, Your Honor. Thank you. Councilman Pacheco. I don't have anything. Councilman Hiley. Not trying to start a scandal here, but uh, on the topic of bad debt, uh, a bar that I once attended <clears throat> when they extended credit to their patrons and their patrons failed to pay, would put their names on the walls and say this person was uh, bad, put a little <laughs> wall of shame. So in publishing close to 20 pages of names of people who failed to pay their utility bills, uh, the city has established a wall of shame and businessmen in the community may certainly access this and, and decide whether or not you choose to extend credit to these people. That's all I got. <laughs> well, that, that begs the question, once a welcher, always a welcher? Maybe not. Okay. It's your choice. <laughs> That's all right. I, said. I didn't say don't. I said. <laughs> Okay. But the city has tried for greater than a decade on some of these people to, to collect. And, and also, just one more thing on that, um, the city has also cross-checked these names. So if, if they would come in and apply for utilities again, um, they would, they would uh, be rejected or slash asked to pay for these. these. These efforts have gone on for a long time, and 
it's kind of sad to see one hundred forty eight thousand dollars in debt written off bad debt but but um, it won't affect the financial standing of the city these these uh, these debts have been reported over the years uh, and they're off the you know they're just, this is just a final act to take them off the books thank you councilman johnson nothing vice mayor kathy well there was a joint powers water board meeting today <laughs> uh, not uh, one of the big issues there which doesn't affect the city but it was the Wardwell water tank. Uh, so that is needing to be repaired. Uh, it was wind damage there, but that is uh, a joint powers water board issue and not does not come out of the city budget. So uh, no expense to the city. So that's where we're heading with that. Uh, the other thing that I did want to bring up is, and you've heard me talk about it, is the Generation Casper surveys and the website that's set up, generationcasper.org. Dot com. I'm sorry, I always, but it's generationcasper.com. And out there we've had 281 responses. Uh, more detailed results will be coming out, and there are more detailed results at generationcasper.org. But the survey is at generationcasper.com. Uh, a couple of things is that in 10 to 20 years, people want Casper to be safe economically diverse, family-friendly, affordable, outdoorsy, beautiful, artistic, self-sufficient, healthy, entrepreneurial, active, and vibrant. People want to preserve our friendly and small-town atmosphere, local parks, and family-oriented town, the trail network, and one even more out of community events, Casper College in downtown. So that's what we are receiving right now as far as the surveys are concerned, as where the where the public would like to see the city go in the next 10 to 20 years. And there's one of our residents right there. So <laughs> we are starting them young. Uh, other things, there will be a second survey coming out by the end of this week. So if you've gone to the website and filled out a survey, please go back after the end of the week and there will be another survey asking more questions about how you want us to proceed. Uh, the plan audits, from the previous plans will also be posted on that website by the end of the week so you would be able to go out and review past plans. So that's something to see where, where people 16 years ago thought that we would be going 10 to 20 years from now. Uh, the other thing is there will be a presence at both Back to School Bash and at Riverfest this weekend so you could give input in person at those places. But please, this is a very important document that we're working on. Please go out and present and put your input. Uh, we as the leaders would still like input from, this, from the members, and then we try to make our decisions to get to those ends and to be leaders to accomplish those goals. That's all I've got. Okay. Um, I also attended the regional water board meeting today and what was that thing that they share the expense with Casper and then consultant for yeah it gets reimbursed yeah it's a consultant for uh, for that it's basically the, the fee that, structure yeah, for, yeah, new, right. for new taps, yeah, new taps. Yeah. okay for system development yes okay mm -hmm. so in future it's not going to affect the city of Casper budget, but for the time that we're paying our part and then get reimbursed by regional water, right? That's how that works? Your Honor, I believe we'll have our share, but um, it'll be a split bill between the two, where the, the two entities work by the consultant. Okay. And, and it is... And, and that was part of what came up is that was the city going to participate in this to share costs for their system as well to develop what TAP fees should be so it would be a combined effort. But right. that's something that we as the city need to discuss whether we yeah. want to participate in it or not. And we'll bring that forward and decide as a council. Everybody listening? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Other than that... Um, 
No other meetings to report. Um, I did do a welcoming address for the Grand Lodge last week. So I'm representing Casper as your mayor and seeing how it, if you haven't heard anything about it, I must have done okay. And uh, anything else? I stopped in town yet? Um, no, but I see it's 6.30, so now we can go and watch election results. The next meetings of the Casper City Council will be a work session. Oh, wait. I, I have one comment I would like to make before I close. And it's about Mr. Steensland's comment about the Casper Star Tribune. Um, as a politician, I put a spin on things, right? So you want to hear my spin on the fact that the Casper Star Tribune editorial board could write an entire editorial about endorsing and talking about city council candidates and not even mention, not even mention the incumbent and mayor of Ward 1. Um, here's my spin on it. Are you ready? Because that was the same paper that they published the voter's guide, and I had my little 500 words in my own words, the fact that they didn't mention me means that they did me the courtesy of letting me speak for myself. That's my spin. <laughs> The next meeting of the City Council will be a work session to be held at 4.30 p.m. Tuesday, August 23rd, 2016 in the Council's meeting room. And the next regular Council meeting will to be, be held at 6 p.m. Tuesday, September 6th, 2016 in the Council Chambers. Chair would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved by Councilman Miller, seconded by Councilman Johnson. Please cast your vote. And please record the vote. Councilman Hiley, happy voting day. All right. Okay, you guys can sit here for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs>